Three wins in one year. Does Wyndham Clark have the best swing on the PGA Tour? I vote yes. Leave a comment below if you agree with that. Let's break this move down and find out what makes him so great. All right, Wyndham Clark. This is a swing I have been very impressed with dating back to Bay Hill of last year when I was watching him rip three woods past most guys' drivers on the first hole. Naturally, watching him hit it far, I was took an interest into his game, and I knew it was just a matter of time before he was going to get that first W. Obviously, that came at the Wells Fargo. He followed it up with a U.S. Open victory, and then he got his third win at Pebble Beach. In my opinion, I think he's on the brinks of the P being the PJ Tour's next superstar, if not already there. And the thing about this swing is I think this is the prototypical swing we're going to see in years to come. So guys who are athletic, guys who take care of their body, guys who don't only hit it straight, but they also bomb it. It's going to be interesting to see as they eventually roll the golf ball back if this is the type of player that's going to separate themselves. On that note, been very impressed with how Wyndham takes care of his body. Uh, if you follow him closely on Instagram, he works with Premier Fitness Solutions out in Scottsdale, Arizona. Puts a lot of work into his body, so uh, you can tell he's a hard worker. And uh, let's jump into it. Starting with the setup, I always like to start with the left shoulder to left hip relationship. So you can see those are pretty much aligned and that's gonna create some tilt in the shoulders. This helps hitting the driver. Um, you might see it a little differently, you know, with an iron, especially as you're trying to hit more down on it, but um, pretty standard in terms of spine tilt out of dress. His lead elbow points at the target. Okay, so this is something that we now have seen from the last three winners on the PGA Tour. And his trail elbow points just outside his right rib cage. Now, I think this is where we, we see a little variance. So Rory sets up very similar to Wyndham. And then I would say some players set up with it a little bit more tucked, maybe like a Bryson DeChambeau. So that's kind of the window of where we see that trail elbow point. And ultimately that's gonna influence how that trail shoulder is loading in the backswing and through the transition. So either way works. Obviously it's just gotta match up. Now, I really like the amount of foot flare Wyndham has at address. And I think this is a good um, model to follow if you're, you know, 95% of the golfing population, assuming that uh, most people are not going to have range of motion in their hips. And so uh, basically by adding some flare, we're going to give the pelvis more room to actually turn. Now, the interesting thing about this is Wyndham has a very wide base, okay? And one of the things about a very wide base is the wider your stance gets, a lot of times that will actually pull the pelvis into more of an anterior tilt. So a lot of times in that case, the belt buckle will point more down. Anytime that happens, the hips themselves will, will have less range of motion to work with. With the wide base, it makes sense now of why he has a little bit more flair. It's probably to uh, allow that pelvis uh, some range of motion to actually turn through. So I, I really like that correlation there. Now his grip, I would say his grip is on the weaker side of the spectrum. So most of the logo is pointing at the target. I think this is actually similar to Nick Dunlap's grip. I know a lot of you commented in on that analysis and thought that uh, his grip was actually stronger. So uh, if you disagree with what I'm saying about Wyndham's grip, leave a comment below. I've been wrong before, um, but to me it looks a little bit on the weaker side. The V of his right hand points up inside his right shoulder. So uh, overall, I would say it's a little weaker grip. There is some cup in there, right? So we do see a little bit of cup in that uh, form to uh, hand relationship. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see how he kind of monitor, monitors that relationship in the backswing. Down the line's pretty good. Obviously the camera angle is slightly off. Um, you can see that it's set up more down the target line. Typically we like to shoot from uh, more on the hand line or the toe line. And you can see that does create a little parallax there. So you can see uh, at address uh, his body looks like it's aimed slightly to the right. Uh, it's not, it's just the, where the camera was being shot from. Um, but overall, I think it, it's a pretty good setup from the down the line, right? Uh, knees are flexed over the balls of the feet. We draw a line up that hits at the armpits. So that's 
sign that he's pretty balanced. There's some space between his hands and his pelvis, obviously. Um, we see this from a lot of the bombers as they create more rotation, they need room to actually rotate through. So um, that is something we see a lot and that helps establish how far he's standing from the ball. So obviously if there's more distance from the hands to the pelvis, he, he's gonna be a little bit further away. But overall, I like that. Spine is pretty neutral. So pretty neutral in the lumbar section. We start to see uh, a little curve, not much up top. So that, that's good. And then the big thing that I, I'm always looking at is, is how these arms are hanging relative to the pec. So you can see if we draw a line down, his humerus bone, which is from his shoulder down to his elbow, is hanging this side of 90 degrees. So I, that's something I like to see. Typically what that does is that's going to allow the arms to sit a little bit more in front or on top of the pecs from the face on view. So uh, that's something that when we look back to our last two analysis is uh, Matthew Pavan and Nick Dunlap, their arms sat a little bit differently. Uh, so they sat more on the sides of the pecs. So the way Wyndham has it set up is my preferred way because then that will allow the arms to move a little bit more in front of the body uh, going back. So the, that lead humerus doesn't have to work around that lead pec as much. But overall, I think um, a really good setup that the thing to kind of take away is is the wider base uh, is paired with the foot flare. So I love that. All right, so we're gonna get some lines on his pelvis and then the top of his head, okay? And in my opinion, this is where the magic happens. Off the ball, he doesn't have as much lateral motion. So you can see if anything, he's moving up very quickly. So almost up into the right at a slight angle, okay? Versus Nick Dunlap and Matthew Pavan, we saw a little bit more lateral motion in their swing early on. So Wyndham has very little of that. So what he does is he, he goes up in the first half of the backswing, okay? Nice wide takeaway. I want you to kind of notice that the pelvis has not moved much laterally. So he's he's pretty much staying in between the lines that he started at address. And then right about waist high, what starts to happen is he now starts to lower, okay? So he starts to then lower as he goes to the top, okay? Um, this is something that we see from the bomber. So at, at some point we see an upload in the backswing, and then at some point they reverse that, and their goal is to accelerate that center of mass as fast as they can towards the ground. This is, creates what we call unweighting. So as you unweight and you get lighter through the transition, uh, there's more potential for vertical force. He does a great job with his pivot, okay? So you can see that the right hip has worked back just a little bit. And because he had more turn and less sway, now the byproduct is his upper body is going to be angled slightly away from the target, okay? Benefits of this are one, you're gonna be able to create more turn, so you're gonna be able to wind your body up a lot more efficiently. And then two, that's gonna help neutralize the path for the most part. So the opposite would be if a player wound up and their spine was more extended or on top of it, uh, there's a good chance that that path might end up on the more left side of the spectrum if they rotate. So not always the case, obviously players find ways to get in and out of every position. But if Wyndham was more extended with a lot of body rotation, that could pull the path left. But overall, really good model pivot to, to emulate. Down the line view, we're going to look at the up and down motion. And then I also want you to kind of look to see what's happening with the lower body. Okay, so we got a line on his head. We got a line on his butt. As he creates that up move, okay, in the first half of the backswing, um, what I want you to see is he's not only going up, but he's also pulling away from where he started, okay? So he's going up and pulling away. And I also want you to take note of what's happening with this trail leg. So he starts with a little bit of flex in that trail leg. And then as he goes up to about waist high, you can see that he's actually losing a little bit of that flex. So now he's basically a lost flex. And 
Losing flex in that trail leg, in my opinion, is very important to allowing the pelvis to turn. It doesn't mean that he's not loading his trail hip. It can still extend a little bit. Do we want that locking out? No, we definitely don't want that locking out, but we also don't want to see that increasing flex, right? A, a lot of people do that and all that does is ends up restricting their, their hip turn. As he continues to move up to the top, I want you to see he's now reversing that process. He's now back to where he started. So he, he's pretty much regained that flex that he started with in that right leg. And his head is not only going towards the ball, but he's also going down. So remember, this is the point where he's trying to accelerate his center mass as quickly as he can towards the ground. This is, in my opinion, what the longest guys do really well. Uh, they, they have some type of upload move in there, and then somewhere between P2 and P3, they are going down. Now, remember what we said, right? So in the backswing, he lost some flex. Now he regains flex, okay? So this trail hip is loaded. He's ready to go from there. You know, interestingly enough, Wyndham doesn't have like a, a massive turn, okay? So you can see where his lower body starts and then at the top, there's a little bank of his left leg. So his, his lead leg banks in just a little bit, but it's not a ton, right? I mean, obviously not like a, a Bubba Watson or anything. And, and you can tell that's probably why his swing only goes back to roughly parallel. So perfectly okay. I think if you're someone that struggles with range of motion, I, that's something I wouldn't be afraid of. So I definitely would maybe let that lead leg work back just a little bit more, but obviously he, he's got the mobility to, to support it. All right, so checking in on this grip to face relationship, obviously we mentioned maybe a little weaker grip, the face on view, a little cup in that lead wrist. As he moves back to P2, one of the things we see is we see maybe a little loss of that cup. Okay, so obviously tough to tell exactly with the, the camera angles. Looking at the face relationship, it's definitely more on an incline. Okay, so pretty much matching the spine angle. This is something that we, we like to see. That's gonna ensure that the face is staying square to the arc he's swinging back on. As we move him up to the top from the face on view, you'll see he has a decent amount of cup in his wrist. Okay, so left arm relationship to the club, it's definitely loading. And in the process of doing that, he actually regains a little bit of that cup that he had at address. So now the byproduct is the face isn't gonna be pointed as much at the sky. Okay, so I'd say it's definitely on the square to maybe even open side of the spectrum. You know, weak grip, if you maintain that cup, you're gonna have more of a, a square to open face. Now, this could lead to one of two things. One, if he cuts the ball and he gets that path more to the left, that creates a matchup. Or if he does get his path moving a little bit more into out, the open face could help him actually start balls to the right. I don't know the exact ball flight he hits, but overall, he sets himself up nicely from a body positioning standpoint to have a good move through the transition. And what we see is we see a little bit of an overlapping. So as the club is still working back, okay, so we can see the club working back, his lower body is starting the process of actually rotating towards the target, okay? So you can kind of see that if I play that a couple of times. Club going back, lower body going in the opposite direction, that's gonna create a big stretch. So lead arm is gonna load across the chest. And then what he's also doing is he's, he's creating a, a massive stretch from his left hip up to that right shoulder. Really important part of the rotational process. So if you can load that, uh, obviously your body's gonna fire much more efficiently. So one of the things I've talked about in other videos is I love to see this P5 position. So especially uh, we like to see the knee square by this position. This is telling us that his lower body is opening at the appropriate rates. And remember with the camera angle, the way it is, you know, it's going to look less open from this position. But obviously, uh, I like where he's at. A hand path and a downswing is pretty much center of the chest. Okay, so if we look at where the hands are moving, they go up, they load back a little bit. So they, they drop down and then as he rotates, they work out. Okay, so pretty much middle of the chest. Based off that information, I'd say his path is pretty neutral. Club moving nicely down through the forearm. And then if we stop him right at impact, uh, this, is, this is textbook right here, folks. So bent right elbow, love that. Lower body that is open, so we can see his left hit. And then the spine is actually tilting a little bit to the right. So he's got some 
nice lateral bend in there. So that that is textbook. And that's going to play a role in allowing his hands to exit nicely around the body. So you can see for the most part, the hands are exiting just under the left shoulder, and that's going to create some stability through that face. So we don't see a ton of rolling of that face. Really nice finish. I, I love this position where um, golfers finish with their heel a little bit more that way. So that is uh, from some of my go to days. I, I like to see that heel away all day. As you can see, not much lateral motion with the pelvis in the through swing. Okay, so if we draw a line from the left hip down, okay, very minimal lateral. Now, one of the interesting things is his upper body does tip back just a little bit. Okay, so you can see the upper body moving back ever so slightly. Typically, when we see the upper body move back, sometimes what that does uh, is that could actually move the low point back, okay? So to where now you might be hitting balls thin or you might be uh, hitting balls fat. But one of the ways he, he offsets this is watch his lead elbow. So as he gets closer to impact, he starts to actually flex this lead elbow, okay? So we start to see that actually pull towards the target. A lot of you guys might consider this a chicken wing, uh, and, and I know a lot of you hate this in your own swings, but this is a release style we do see from a lot of the top guys. You know, Brooks Kepka, Victor Hovland, we can certainly put Wyndham in that category. So by flexing that lead elbow, okay, that's gonna get the handle more forward at impact, okay, and ensure that uh, his strike point is correct. Does everyone need to do that? No, but is it a, a good way to, to match some things up? 100%. Ricky Fowler is another one. And then obviously, the last thing we'll talk about is because he has a lot of rotation in his lower body, I love what this left leg is doing through impact. Okay, so it, it's straightening, right? So that left leg straightening is going to increase vertical force. Obviously, that's a, a major power component. Um, but also, the, the more we can get that left leg straightening you know, in a timely fashion, that's going to help pull up on the handle. And as a byproduct, that's going to uh, accelerate the club head. Overall, I mean, as you can see, I think there's a lot of really good things in this swing. Big things that we see in his swing versus like a long drive swing is we don't see as much lateral. So I'd say uh, the fact that he keeps his center of mass a lot more stable from a from a lateral standpoint is going to probably make it easier on his ability to hit the different shots needed in golf. Obviously, in long drive, guys are, are only hitting driver. Keeping that center of mass a little bit more stationary will help with some of the shorter shots, especially the off-speed shots. But nonetheless, you know, he, he still has a few of those power components built into his move.